All right, let's see. We got a Klein. We got a Klein. We got a Klein. We got a Klein. We even got a Klein. How many more freaking Klein's do we really need? Have you ever looked at all the gear musicians use and wonder how does it all work? My name's Dustin and my family and I are setting out on a quest to inspire both adult and kid musicians to create new sounds together and learn all about what it takes to produce great music. We'd like to invite you along on the journey as we explore the gear professional studios, musicians, and hobbyists use to create their art. We'll take a close-up look at the gear and ask, What's this button do? Hello and welcome to this week's episode of What's This Button Do? I am your host, Dustin, and this week we are doing something a little impromptu. So last week on the show, I said I was going to talk a little bit about the Amplified Nation Steel String Singer that uh, is sitting behind me. And I'm going to postpone that episode for a week because something happened right after I filmed the last episode that broke the internet. Uh, many of you have heard me talk about an effect company called Origin Effects. Um, they are probably best known for their compressors. They make some of the best compressors. They're old big box compressors. Phenomenal. Truly some of the best things on the market. Um, someday I'll review one of those so you guys can take a look at it. Um, but they made an announcement and people went absolutely crazy. They had been posting these pictures of kind of a gold light coming out of a briefcase uh, a la Pulp Fiction kind of thing. Um, and then suddenly they announced the addition of this new pedal, the Halcyon. And I had no idea this was coming, didn't, didn't hear anything about it. And they said, we have taken the Klon circuit and created our own version of the Klon. Now, Usually when Origin makes an announcement, I get very excited because I love their pedals. When they said, we've created a Klon, my heart kind of sank a little bit because I've noticed a trend in our industry. Um, every pedal company out there has made a Tube Screamer, a Klon. They're versions of these pedals. Um, and there is a bazillion different Klon clones out there. It, I mean, there's even a term for it in our industry. They call it a clone and spell it with a K. That's how crazy it is. There are so many clones out there and so many tube screamers that the market is just saturated with these. And for those who have no idea what I'm talking about, let me give you a little brief history. So back in the early 90s, uh, Bill Finnegan, uh, who was an, an amazing pedal maker, came up with this idea to create an overdrive pedal. And there was already a lot of overdrive pedals on the market. But what was driving him nuts is every time he plug an overdrive into his amps, if he had the amps on a clean setting and tried to push them with the overdrive, they just didn't break up the same way that you, you had when you cranked up a, an amplifier. It just didn't give you that same kind of feel and that same kind of push. Drove him nuts because he's like, well, it should, you know, you're, you're boosting the volume on your amp. You should be able to kind of push that into that with a pedal. And most of the pedals back in, in that time were using what they called soft clipping. Um, and so it just did not give you the same kind of feel that happened when you pushed this amp. So what Bill came up with the idea for is he took, um, I think it was four op amps, if I remember right, um, uh, and some geranium components, and he created this hard clipping circuit. And really what you need to know for that is typically, uh, to give you an idea of what that, that sounds like, because I know it's a lot of stuff that you don't really need to know, but um, hard clipping essentially is what they use in like a, a Proco Rat and more of your distortion pedals to really get that crunchy, like slamming sound to it. So you don't see that in a lot of typical overdrives. It's not really something you do. Um, nowadays and more modern, now that Bill's done that, they have, but at that time, <laughs> that Bill was kind of a pioneer into that realm. Um, so what he did was create this, this circuit that used hard clipping, but he also took the dry signal from the guitar and blended it back into the circuit. Now that was a really creative thing because what you did then was you retained those little note separation and the sounds of you picking those individual notes and brought them back into the sound where hard clipping typically destroyed some of that and, and wiped it out of your sound. And so what people found is when they plugged in this Klein, when you had it on lower gain volumes, you didn't have to turn the gain up very much. You could just turn the volume up and the treble a little bit and then suddenly your amp sounded just like you were pushing it, but you could have it turned down quite a bit, which for recording purposes, that's great. For any modern player that's on a stage where you're miking cabinets, nobody wants to have to crank their amp to 11. It just, it puts too much stress on the amp and sound guys hate that. They would much rather have the amp turned down to a manageable volume and that way they can adjust the sounds on, on their levels on their own. So 
the Klon allowed you to do that, allowed to create this. Now, it, it was a hard clipping circuit. It had a ton of gain on top. When you crank that thing, man, you could distort. You could really get some crunchy sounds out of there, sometimes to an unbelievable sound. Um, so that's what the circuit was all about. Well, at the time, Bill would take this, this black goop and put it on there, and nobody knew exactly how he was doing it. But in 2009, he announced that he was no longer going to make that circuit. So the pedal world went crazy. People were chipping away at that black goop and trying to like heat it up and get it off there so they could figure out what was what was happening. But the problem was at the time, and, and it, since it's gone nuts, um, the original Klon started selling on the used market because that was about the time that reverb started getting really popular. And Klon prices went through the roof, so much so that, I mean, you're talking eight, dollars $9,000 sometimes for a Klon, um, which was just insane. So for somebody to chip away at that little goop to figure out what was going on, that, that was quite a bit of money that you're putting at risk there, but some people did it. So they figured out how to reverse engineer this circuit, and then everybody started making copies of it. Well, in the meantime, Bill had not retired. What he was working on was a way to make this, because from 90, I think it was 94, uh, 94, 95, somewhere in there, all the way to 2009 when he stopped making the Centaurs, he had made somewhere between seven to 9,000, somewhere in that area of, of the actual Klons. But I mean, when you consider that's over 15 years, there's pedal companies now that are cranking out, you know, 8,000 pedals in a couple of months. So he wanted to find a way to be able to make the Klon and make it more affordable, A, and take less time to produce. And so that's what gave him the idea to create the KTR. The KTR was his second pedal, which was essentially the same thing as the Klon, but instead of using hand-wired, just constant, you know, through-hole components, what he did was made a board that you could surface mount the components to, which saves anybody who's ever made a pedal or, or opened up a pedal. It saves you tons and tons of time. So... That's how the KTR came about, which was the second uh, iteration of the Klon. Now, I had an original Klon years and years and years ago. It was one of my favorite pedals. I have little tinges of regret constantly that I sold it. I really wish I could find one again for a somewhat reasonable price. I know, I know I'll never find one for a reasonable price, but if I ever find one, I, I really want to get one again. But uh, um, when they got to unreasonable prices where, you know, you could get a down payment for a house for one. It just seemed insane for me to hang on to it at the height of that market. Um, plus, in the time, uh, Mythos had come out with an amazing pedal called the Mjolnir, which is a recreation of one of Zach's actual Klons. Um, and he got it dialed in where it sounded so much like a Klon, it blew my mind. Um, so I picked up one of those and, and never looked back. And I actually compared it, A-beat it uh, with a Klon, and, and it really does sound just like a Klon circuit. It's, it's beautiful. Um, so I picked up that, and then I had also gotten a KTR. So I was like, you know what? This is silly. I'm not going to sit on this pedal. When it was at the height of its market, I sold it off. But like I said, a little tenses of regret. Still wish I had that on my board. Um, so when the Halcyon was announced, I was underwhelmed. I was just like, nope. No, no, like, I'll give this a pass. Turned off the computer, didn't even watch the YouTube demos. Well, then after a couple days, had a couple people hit me up. And they were like, hey, man, you got to review this. You got to review this. You got to review this. So it's like, okay. So I ordered one, and it came in a couple days ago, and I sat down with it, and I started to just try it out and read the manual and see what was going on. And as I read the manual, I thought, there's something going on here. So I decided rather than me messing around with it uh, a ton, I am going to actually do it with you guys. I have got my board set up over here. I have got a KTR. I have got my original Mythos uh, Klon. And I've got the Halcyon. We are going to play with the three of them and just see the differences, see the sounds. And I'll let you guys hear for yourself. And you can judge for yourself what you think of it. Um, let's go explore this together. We'll hop over to the pedal board. I'll meet you over there. All right, so today we are going to be using the trusty Fender Telecaster, um, and I'm going to stay in the bridge pickup because that's usually where the Klon kind of uh, rocks out anyway, so we'll just stick with that and make it easy for everybody. Um, you'll notice on the board today, what I've got here is the Mythos Mjolnir, we've got the Klon KTR, and we've got the Origin Halcyon. I also have another uh, different version of the Mjolnir on my main board. I'll click that on every now and then too, just so you guys can hear that. We'll talk about that when it happens. Um, but... 
Um, I want, before we start, to point out something. When Bill reissued the pedal, um, the KTR, the prices for the, the Centaur had gone through the roof at that point, and I've, I've always gotten a kick out of this. What he stamped on the KTR when it came out, there's no mention of Klon on here, there's no KTR, and there's none of the picture of the Centaur like he did on the original. What he put was the stamp that says, kindly remember, the ridiculous th hype that offends so many is not of my making. Uh, because at the time, people were just going nuts that people were paying unreasonable prices for one pedal. It was just insane. And Bill wanted people to know, hey, I did not want this. That was not my intent on retiring the style in 2009. I just wanted to find a way to make more of these for people. So um, very, very cool. So let's jump into it. Let's hear what they sound like. So I, I think we have to start with the original. I, it seems like the right thing to do. So just to give you an idea, I'm just gonna turn this on. I have got everything set pretty much just straight up in the middle, just so you can hear it. <laughs> By way of comparison, here is clean. See, that clawn sound is traditionally the mid hump. That's really where it's all about. It's about making those mids really stand out in the mix and and pushing your amp up and uh, giving it a little bit more gain. So what a lot of people will do is instead of turning the gain up real high, and just to give you an idea, so you're talking gain, treble, and output knobs here. I know they don't label them on the KTR, that's kind of weird. Um, but a lot of people will have their output kind of just right in the middle. They'll have their treble slightly up from the middle or right in the middle, and then they'll have the gain way down. So when we're at clean, again, going back. See how that just brought the volume up? It didn't distort it. So it's like the, the amp is right on the edge of breakup, but it's not there. And the more we push that gain up, the closer that edge of breakup we get. Start to hear break up a little bit. Now we're starting to break up. See there, we're into full breakup. So really cool sound. I really, really love the KTR. And I think it is a truly wonderful recreation. Now, by way of comparison, closer to my original Centaur is actually the Mythos Mjolnir. And I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm just going to keep the output in the middle. I'm going to turn the treble just slightly up, and I'm going to turn the gain all the way down. Now, what I noticed immediately on the Mjolnir is the treble side of things stands out just a little bit more on the Mjolnir than it does on the KTR. And remember, we were dealing with op amps, we're dealing with old germanium components. No two clons, I, I've gotten the opportunity to play several, no two original clons sounded perfectly identical. There's always a little bit of characteristic inside of those pedals. Anytime you're dealing with germanium, uh, you will almost always run into that. That's why I love to play pedals um, ahead of time just to see how they sound with my rig. But that's the kind of cool thing about this Mjolnir, is as I go up... <laughs> Notice now we're about 10, 10.30 on the gain. Still not quite to break up yet. Now when I get to around noon. We're starting to get to that breakup. I'm gonna take the climb back to that kind of same setting that I've got this one on and show you what it sounds like. Just a little different sound to it. And then when we crank the gain and we really get up to like that two, three. Cool. All right, so there's the sound. So we're just gonna start in that middle position. Now let's turn on the Halcyon and see how that sounds. Now this is interesting because 
Every other Klon clone that you see out there, for the most part, has three things. Gain, treble, and output. And remember when we were talking about the description of this, I, I mentioned that the original Klon blended the dry signal in. That's just in the wiring of the pedal. That was its own thing. It wasn't something you could control. Now, what the Halcyon's done is given us a different layout on the pedal. What they've got here is your level, your drive, which this is kind of your volume, this is your drive, and this is your tone. So think of tone kind of like the treble. It's a little different in how it acts with the circuit, but somewhere in that area. And then it's got a dry blend knob so you can control the amount of dry signal that's coming into the actual uh, uh, sound itself, which I think is very, very interesting. And then what they've got in traditional origin fashion is they've got two switches here. The first one uh, from the bottom up is the Klon version versus the mod. So the mod version, they've actually taken that mid EQ and changed the hump just a little bit. And this is especially important for like single coil pickups because um, sometimes on an original Klon, you can get a little nasally because the, the way that that the hump happens in the mids, it makes your treble start sounding kind of funky. Um, especially when you get up into higher gains and you get a little bit louder, you can get some kind of weird things that you have to dial back a little bit or need to EQ out. Um, so the idea with the mod mode of this is when you're using a single coil, it should help just keep those a little bit smoother. So we'll test that out since we're gonna be using a single coil guitar today. And then this upper mode is something that they introduced uh, several pedals back on some of their smaller form factor pedals. They have an adaptive mode. And what the adaptive mode does is as you turn the volume down on your guitar, almost always, and let me, let me show you what this means. So like if I'm just playing my guitar, right? And I turn the volume down, just turning it down a little bit. See how not only does it turn the volume down, it changes the characteristic of the EQ. It makes the mid sound a little bit different. It doesn't just drop the volume. There's always a little bit of a mid roll off there. What the adaptive knob does is actually keep that from happening. So when you're in the number two mode, which is where I usually live in my origin pedal, so that's where I'm gonna set it at today. That one allows that mid curve to kind of adjust as you roll down the volume. So we'll test that out as well. So what I think we should do is let's start at just this turned all the way down, we'll keep it in Klon mode and we'll just turn it on with all of them in the middle like we did on our Klon. Okay, right away I'm noticing that is louder if we have these all turned right at the middle knobs. Okay, first thing I'm noticing right away, so the treble's coming through more on the Halcyon. It's a little bit louder. We can adjust that, bring the, the loudness down a little bit. I wonder if, yeah, the adaptive is definitely making that treble stand out. But I like that. I like that it's given that treble just a little bit of a shine there. But there's times when you may not want that. We're going to live in this mode for just a second. You can even hear just the clean, just buzzing sound of the guitar changed when I switched over to adaptive mode. You're bringing in more of those highs. So let's play around with this a little bit. Let's try to get our sounds that we were talking about a little earlier. Let's take the drive all the way down. We're going to leave the level in the middle. We're going to put our tone up just a little bit. Let's keep our drive down. And we'll start without the adaptive on. Let's just see what that does. So as a sweetener, it sounds beautiful. Let's take it up a little bit. Now I'm noticing that's already getting even, we're only at like seven o'clock. I'm gonna go back over here. I'm gonna take this one down and do the same thing. I think this is a little... Yeah, this is introducing gain a little earlier. Part of it is that loudness. We're going to take the loudness down. See there, I like the KTR. I like the way it shines a little bit better. Let's bring in the adaptive and see if that helps. Yeah. And I also think we need to blend in some of that dry. Now we're closer to that climb. 
sound to it. So it needs a little bit of that dry in there because that was the beauty of the original Klon circuit. But isn't that interesting that we have a knob here to be able to do that? That's pretty cool. I gotta say, I like the idea of being able to do that. Now, what I really wanna see here is in this low gain mode, when I change the voice, what's that doing to the treble? It does make that treble stand out a little bit more. I honestly like it in the Klon mode more at the low gain. Yeah, I think so. All right, let's explore that gain knob a little bit. We're gonna just bring it up to around there. That's getting really cool, kind of rockery. Let's kick it up to about one o'clock. Let's do the same thing back to the KTR. I'm gonna come back over here, do it around that one o'clock. Oh, there is a crispness to that. Let's try our mythos out. I'm gonna, whoops, haha, <laughs> pick down. Let's take that mythos up a little bit. There is a sweetness to that Alcyon, I'm kind of digging. All right, let's crank it all the way up here. to that original Klon. I'm gonna take the clean back a little bit and bring that up. Let's see. There's still a little treble magic happening there in that original KTR that I'm liking. Close. It is close. Yeah, it gets there. It really does get there, but there's still there's that little bit of a magic in that KTR that I love when you get into those higher gains where it makes those trebly notes shine. But uh, I gotta say, that is impressive how well that does. And I'm gonna get bad feedback for this. I know, I know you guys are gonna give me grief for this, but here's my take. I think that at lower gains, this actually does something magic and sounds amazing. I think at the higher gains, I still like what this does to the MIDI cue and the treble. Um, and, and the Mjolnir is very similar in that. It gives you that kind of curve, but 
Wowie, wow, wow. I'm going to try one more thing. Um, I have the Mjolnir uh, GE edition on my uh, pedal board down below me here. I'm going to turn that on real quick. I'm going to put the gain all the way up and the treble because this is the one I use for a little bit higher gain. I want to see how that sounds versus this. So we're going to switch back and forth between them. So right now I'm going to turn off the Halcyon. I'm going to turn on my Mjolnir. <laughs> Let's go back to the Halcyon. And back to the Mjolnir. Interesting, interesting. Yeah, I'm still still kind of leaning towards some of that gain there. This definitely has a louder, like it can definitely get louder than any of these because we're only using the volume up to that level. If we crank this, let's do one last final test here. We're gonna just make it loud. <laughs> there's not a ton once you get to about that one two o'clock the rest of the way up you're not pushing it too very far you're just taking it just a little bit louder it's not a massive amount but i do think there is more volume in the halcyon versus the other two um but the breakup is a different characteristic it definitely does change a little bit how it breaks up in that in that uh heavier side of things interesting okay now that was not what i was expecting um I am impressed, I will say. I, I went into this demo thinking, oh Lord, another claw, and like, had people not asked me to do it, I wouldn't have done it. But I thought, you know what, let's, let's try it, um, and let's see what we think. I'm impressed. I am, I'm very, very, very impressed at the clean side and that blend knob. I think, and I mean, this is just, we're, we're literally exploring this together. Give me a week or two with this pedal, and I think it's going to be very interesting to see what we can dial in with it. Um, but I genuinely think the lower gain side of that to the mid range, from from about uh, flat to all the way up to about noon, I am absolutely loving where the Halcyon sits. I think as a clean boost and as a little bit of a push overdrive, wow, wow, wow. That, I think, is going to be gorgeous. Can't wait to push it into some other pedals, too, and see what happens there. That'll be very interesting. Um, so I do think there is a tremendous value in this pedal. Um, and, and the high gain settings sounded great. Do not get me wrong. But my ear is so used to playing with the old style Klon and the that Mythos um, variations that it's it's not that same sound to me in my ears. Um, that that mid push is different. It, it It's not bad at all. It's just different. So if you're used to playing a traditional Klon, um, this is probably at, at the high gain settings. This is probably not going to um, replace your Klon drive. However, I really don't have room for another pedal on my pedal board, but I don't know that I've heard as good of a low gain drive as that. I am I am blown away. I, I think I'm going to absolutely try to put this on my board. I love it. I, I love it. I can't wait to see how it stacks up against other drives. It also makes me, I skipped another pedal from Origin called the DCX Boost um, that came out earlier this year um, because I didn't know that it, if it would be right for me. I am very interested to try that now because it it has the same form factor as the Halcyon. I am I'm very interested to see how that sounds. So I may order one of those up and, and uh, do a demo in a couple weeks of that too, just to see how it stacks. Um, but I am, yeah, I, I gotta say, I'm impressed by the Halcyon. Like I said, does it replace the Klon? I, I, I personally don't think so. I'll leave it up to you guys, you've heard them now. And uh, someday I'm hoping I'll get an old Klon in here. We can do a side-by-side -side shootout as well. Um, but I, I genuinely think there's something magical in that upper level distortion. Um, if you like that sound from a Klon, that this just, 
is it quite there? It's close, but it's not quite there um, where where you can dial that in with, with a good client. Um, so yeah, it's it's beautiful. It is awesome. I am a huge fan. Like I said, this is going on my board. I, I'm very, very impressed, Origin. I really thought you were making a mistake by making a Klon clone, but you didn't. You really, really impressed. And and I will say the high gain drive on here, I'm going to try that out. Like I said, it's not, not the sound that I picture in my head with a Klon, but it does sound good. And I think it's going to be really fun to play with. So um, we'll definitely be testing that out later on too. All right. Well, next week, I promise you, we will get back to that still string sing, uh, singer demo that I talked about um, last week. So we will have that next week. And then hopefully in a couple weeks, I can get one of those DCX boosts and we'll try that out as well. So please join me back here as always. Thanks to my friends at Palin for hosting our show and uh, and do follow me on Instagram. I'll put the link down below um, at what the, what's this button do, Dustin. Um, love to hear your comments, your feedback. If you've been playing with this, love to hear what you think of it so far. And for those who have an old Klein um, and, or who've been using the KTR, I'd love to hear your opinion of those sounds. If you're hearing the same thing I am, or maybe you're going, Dustin, where are you talking about that Halcyon Overdrive sounds way better. Like, I like it more. Tell me, I'd love to hear that down below um, and love to talk about it. So please comment down below and uh, we'll see you back here in about a week for our Amplified Nation Still String Singer. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful week. We'll see you soon.